Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to lecture three of chapter three on elastic plastic fracture mechanics. As usual, we will quickly review what we covered in lecture two. And today, we will cover two major topics relationship between J and CTOD and crack growth resistance curves. And inside crack growth resistance curves, we will hopefully talk about a stable and unstable crack growth. So let's see what we did last time. We started uh, revising this hinge model for experimental evaluation of CT. We described this in terms of the load and the displacement V. We told you the determination of the plastic component of crack mouth opening displacement, the load against crack mouth opening curve, where the plastic portion VP is found by drawing a line parallel to the initial straight line. Then we defined CTOD as delta or CTOD for the elastic region and for the plastic region. And for the elastic region, it is the same as we can found in terms of K1. And for the plastic region, we do it from the hinge. We showed you practically how this determination of CTOD is done in a schematic fashion, of course, not the actual machinery and the sample size and so on that is used. Then we started talking of the second measure of fracture toughness in elastic plastic fracture mechanics, the J contour integral. We defined it. We showed you the nonlinear elastic assumption of the material that though the going curve, the loading curve is the same as the initial elastic and then the curved plastic. But rather than unloading it along the actual line, we assume that we unload on the same line. So this then will become the theory of non-linear elastic, non-linear elastic. Uh, this is also called the deformation theory of plasticity. And we described it, the Rice and Rosengren method with Hutchins. Uh, we defined how the J integral is a path independent integral and so on. We again uh, gave you a figure that there could be different paths, gamma 1, gamma 2, gamma 3, gamma 4. But if we take the integral around the crack, then all of them will give you the same. And then this, that we started using J, defining J as the non-linear energy release rate. So, uh, right, that we, we told you that G is defined the same way. It is the differential of the potential energy with respect to A, but that was in the linear area. If we define it in the nonlinear area, thus, then the same quantity becomes J. And we defined the internal energy and so on, the work done. We took you that the potential energy is the difference between the internal energy and P multiplied by delta, right? The force multiplied by the work done and so on. We took you through the equations. We defined J for you. We showed you the compact specimen, uh, crack size A, load P, uh, displacement or opening delta. Then you plot load against displacement and you get the curve as we have done earlier and you take this small infinitesimal area, uh, D delta into DP and so on. We discussed. And then we, based on that, we defined uh, how J will be calculated, uh, how for linear elastic J will be the same as K1 squared by. Then how do we do laboratory measurement of J? Uh, in a linear elastic case, J will be simpler because J is equal to G. But in a nonlinear, which is the regular one, uh, how do we measure? Uh, we describe the whole thing. Uh, in and Lands and Begley uh, formulation for that. Uh, and this was the crux of the whole method that P against delta curves for samples which have different crack sizes. The area under the curve will be the U. Then from here convert it into a U against A curve for the different displacements. And from there, uh, the slope of the curve is DU, DA, which is the J. So now you have J against delta for different values. So this was the crux of the method, a long method, but uh, quite uh, decent 
practical and then uh, that for an edge character specimen this is the value of j then the lands and begley approach again and then rice a all their approach and so on and that the equation can now be this for the particular uh, geometry that we are showing in the next that this is now a double edge notched specimen right crack size a and middle distance 2b then again that the delta can be divided into delta elastic plus delta plastic uh, so that the delta elastic can be simply the k1 squared by e and the other is this part after some manipulation and integration by parts this will be the equation and uh, we can write it like this we can also show it in terms of the angle of the angle of displacement omega uh, again uh, the equation was and we are showing you that instead of the hinge model from the same hinge model we are not calculating or measuring the opening v but we are measuring the gamma by omega by 2 here omega by 2 here so the total angle omega right and then this very compact definition of j in terms of eta factor and then this final equation that eta can be divided into elastic and plastic and the elastic again whatever it is will be k1 squared by e dash e dash remember is equal to e for plane strain is equal to 1 minus nu squared by e for uh, plane stress plane strain and so on and this part will be the plastic part of the j in terms of eta right so we discussed all of this i have taken a lot of time today in just revising this for you so that you are mentally in the same stage after doing all of this we gave you an example that determine the plastic eta factor for the DENT double edge notched tension configuration assuming that the load plastic displacement curve is given like this C and delta P raised to N delta P is the plastic part of the delta raised to N right and we discussed quickly its solution now I want you to pay attention once again right so this was the previous one now we start lecture 3 again giving you the same problem you have hopefully already solved it and looked and so on but not compared with my solution or the book solution and so on so let me do this once again for you it is DENT right remember it is DENT so the shape is the double edge notched shape that we just showed you with omega and so on so now a little more explanation by definition u is the area under the force displacement curve right u force displacement curve so if you are talking in terms of delta p then it is the force p into d delta p remember p into delta force into displacement is the work done or the energy so if you are changing from 0 to delta p then the differential should be here we could always do delta into dp or p into d delta so here it is p into d delta and delta p is changing from 0 to delta p so this is your u and this is your given equation that p is equal to c delta p raised to n right so therefore using this equation we did this we explained it last time and because it is simply like x raised to n so integral of x raised to n is x raised to n plus 1 upon n plus 1 so you get this and once you get this then you compare it with this right because c delta p raised to n right so delta p raised to n into delta p isn't it delta p raised to n plus 1 means delta p raised to n into delta p so therefore this whole thing is 1 upon n plus 1 p delta p right so so this is that this c delta p raised to n is p and that is multiplied by only delta so so this is a very compact form but then the book reminds you that use equation 332 which is this and equation 340 which is this isn't it so therefore you write that this is the original equation this is the elastic part this is the plastic part and now you have converted it into this elastic part and this whole plastic part becomes this so it means you equate this to this if you want just the plastic part elastic part will be the same elastic part remains the same plastic part is this or this 
so compare this with this to find the eta p and then use what you have done earlier so if you do that if you do this comparison then eta p will come out to be this will come out to be this uh, it will take you maybe a couple of minutes maybe four or five minutes but do this because the whole thing is now there that until here up is this and then comparing these two equations compare this portion to this portion and find eta p the plastic part of eta and you will find that it is this and once it is this then try to simplify it try open this up open this up this much after opening multiplied by n plus 1 upon p delta p right take it upside so you will see that it all simplifies to 1 minus n so this is a big thing but do that 2 minutes 3 minutes 5 minutes 10 minutes whatever it takes you so that this is simple i mean it is arithmetic it is not something very complicated so eta p is equal to 1 minus n so this is the whole solution for that double edge notched tension dent sample if you start with this definition of u and this given in the problem then you get this and comparing this to this you get this and simplify it it comes out to be 1 minus n now this sentence in the book and the lecture they are saying for a non hardening material n is equal to 0 this delta p raised to n for a non hardening material n is equal to 0 I want you to go into the book or to anything on fracture mechanics and confirm that this is right that if the material is non hardening remember remember I even described the different models of material perfectly elastic elastic perfectly plastic right elastic linear hardening elastic non-linear hardening so when you say it is a non hardening material non hardening material then either linear or non-linear there is no hardening so after yield point it is not going up right either it is perfectly linear or it is linear perfectly plastic isn't it so the upper portion after the yield point it is not going up so for that type of a material confirm that yes this capital n is equal to 0 if it is equal to 0 then eta p simply is equal to 1 for a non hardening material so that is why knowing the material models uh, gives you a lot of insight if n is equal to 0 then the whole eta p is equal to simply 1 which is a big big achievement so this one example see in this way the book is very good that some of the theory rather than developing as a theory they give you as an exercise and then you apply the previous equations and now you found that eta p for d e n t is equal to 1 minus n and this 1 minus n reduces to only 1 if it is a non hardening material if the theory is right that for a non hardening material capital n is equal with this example you have learnt a lot about uh, the behavior of the j integral in different situations and so on and we will now start relationship between j and ctod this already means that the initial discussion on ctod is over the initial basic discussion on j integral is over and now we are starting to compare j and ctod the same way as we defined for linear elastic fracture mechanics lefm we defined k1 and we defined g and then what was the relationship between k1 and g so this time there are j and ctod the two measurements of fracture toughness for the epfm elastic plastic fracture mechanics case so now we have covered the initial discussion of ctod and j and we will now start discussing their relationships